Welcome to this week's Fallful Thursday. We're going to be talking this week about what are the risks when buying from a property sourcer and how can you protect yourself to make sure that nothing goes wrong. So I'm here with Alastair. Hey. Great to have on the show, buddy. Awesome. Thanks. Um, so obviously, you know, you've been a property sourcer. Yeah. Um, you, you know the industry really, really well, which is great. Um, just to set a little bit of context, there's been quite a lot of talk in the property investors world recently about a particular sourcer who's been um, taking people's money, not supplying what he's supposed to be supplying. Yeah. It's caused quite a lot of controversy. <clears throat> yeah, I personally know quite a few people that have, have lost money yeah. uh, and bought deals where um, <laughs> they've basically haven't been deals that existed and all yeah. sorts of things. Um, so, do you well, first of all, should we give it a little bit of context? You know more about it than I do. So, what what's the sort of context? What's happened to people? Um, okay, so. I'm not going to talk about one particular source. I'm just going to talk about in general. Yeah. Um, what's been happening is people have been put, given money to sourcers yeah. and the property deals are don't exist. Um, they've been on the wrong contracts. They've mm. been in the wrong names. They've been all sorts. So there's there's when you're buying off sourcer, you need to make sure there's lots there's due diligence you have to do. You need to make sure that you're buying from somebody reputable. Um, now, for instance, I would say the the first, uh, if I could give advice on what to look for, is that right? Well, yeah. uh, first of all, clarify the problem. And the, then okay, we'll the problem the is, there's a lot of sources, numbers don't stack up. Uh, a lot of sources are not using the correct paperwork. You see that quite a lot, though, when they put the ROI in it and they don't include things like Find their the eight grand fee. Yeah, and it's ridiculous. like, well, <laughs> it's like if you're not going to include the costs, it's yeah, not really a return on investment. A lot, of pe- uh, a lot of people are just not stacking the deals properly they don't understand how to do the due diligence mm. they don't understand what figures to include what figures not to include yeah um uh, if you buy a property from better source limited whenever we uh, see an roi that includes our finders fees that includes all the fees that you're possibly going to have to pay obviously there might be exceptions where things are a little bit higher it's not um, it's not it's an not exact a, science no, it's but not. it's 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 you, to give you I think the first thing probably then is that you need to understand yourself yep. how to work out a return on investment yeah. to make sure the walls not being pulled over your eyes. Yeah, 100%. And don't, please, please, please do not think, just because you're buying from a property sourcer, that the deal is 100% guaranteed, cast mm. iron solid. It's not. Yeah. All it means is that they've they've gone out and done the legwork. Mm. They've looked at probably 10, 20 houses to find yeah. one. Um, they've done the due diligence as best of their ability the, with the the figures that they can get hold of and the figures they've got and they've they've put that in a uh, they've presented that to you in a manner that you can look at it all in one in in one one sort of mm. picture one pitch and um, so you, basically you're not having to go out and look at 10 properties and look at 10 sets of figures and 10 sets of this is, is, you can is, just look is at there one. is there a point though when if you if you've got to be checking all the work that they've done you've got to be doing your due diligence not on the house necessarily but on them as well yeah, is there a so, point where you might think why not? I don't know, obviously you're a sourcer, but is there yeah. a point where you might think, isn't it just as easy to go and find a deal as it is to then, find a good deal sourcer? Yes, um, I, I'm all for that. But what I will say is if you find a good sourcer and a good um, packager that you can get on with and you trust, then you only have to do it once. It's like getting a because good agent. I'll tell you something, um, most of my business is for repeat business. Mm. It's not newbies coming along to, you know, I want to put my hand and buy it. It's repeat business. I've got investors that have bought multiple, seven, eight, nine houses off me. Mm. Um, and the, the reason they come back to me is because we're doing a good job. We, we're not trying to pull the wool over anybody's eyes. We're not trying to rip anybody off. If a deal falls through, we have refund procedures in place. We have a refund policy, for instance. Well, that's, um, that's so, key, isn't it? Of course it is. It's legal. It's a legal requirement. This whole no refund policy is illegal. You have to have a refund policy. There's no two ways about it. But what I will say, it doesn't matter what business you're in. If you're an unethical businessman, you're going to be unethical in whatever Mm. business you're in. Whether that be, I don't know, whether that be vehicles, whether that be supplying products for a home, whether that be, it doesn't matter. Do you think that a lot of the time as well, if you've got a source of company that's been around for a while, chances are, because you're not going to be able to continue ripping people off no, you're and getting do, away with you'll it. You'll do it once. Um, you'll you'll do it once. It's not going to build. It's not, you're not going to build a business doing that, are you? No, you might gonna... get away with it for three months, six months, and at some point, yeah, the the, the poo is going to hit the fan. Of course it is. Um, but what I'll say, look, if you're if you're looking to use a saucer, mm. 
you got to look at the people or the business that you're working with. Yeah. Look at their website. Does their website tell you everything you need to know about them? Does it have their details on there? Yeah. Their contact details, their phone numbers, their addresses, their VAT number. What, what would you say we should be checking then? So VAT number? Hold on, let me tell you. Go on. Right, tell, so tell me. What, what get on their website. Get on the website, yeah. Check for their company name. Yeah. Check for their address. Yeah. Check for their complaints procedure. Yeah. Check for their property redress scheme number. Yeah. Their insurance policies. You want to be checked. That, that website is their face of their business. So make sure that the website gives you all the information you need to know about that business. So if you've got a problem, it's not some one-page website that's been knocked up on Fiverr that has no information on there, no details on there. Now, just be aware that by law, if you have a website, you have to have your company name on there. You have to have contact information on there. You have to have VAT numbers on there by law. It's not It's not a maybe. It is by law, okay? Um, now, to be a compliance source, you have to be a member of the Property Redress Scheme. Again, on all your documentation, you have to have your property redress scheme number. And just, just explain as well for anyone that doesn't know, how does that protect okay. the buyer? So, if you've got a problem, mm-hmm. obviously, say you say you buy a property and there's an issue. Yeah. The first port of call will always be who you bought the problem, the property through. That's your contractors with them. So, your first port of call will be to contact them through their complaints procedure. So, let's say I buy a property off you. Yep. Right. And it sucks. Yep. Right. And it just wasn't what you told me it was going to be. Okay. So, I then come to you and I say, hey, Alistair. This property is not what you said. These are the actual figures. I'm mm-hmm. really fed up about okay. it. All right. Obviously, I should have checked that as well myself. So the first thing I need to do is check that I think it's a good deal. Oh. You, will, I'm, well, I'm sure at that point, would give me a refund, right? But, but let's, it, it all depends. It depends on a lot of things. Yeah. But let's say I went to a different source and they yeah. were like, sorry, not interested. Sold a scene. Meh. Right. Yeah. But they're a member of the, of the uh, property redress scheme. Then, yeah, what do you, I do? You can point? bring it up with the property redress scheme. Yeah. Um, and providing you follow the correct complaints procedure, um, then they will look into it. What, will... what I've found <clears throat> from, from um, experience is that they tend to side with the, um, the buyer. Okay. Which is, from a buyer's point of view, and I'm watching this, That's fine. it's good. I've, I've never had that experience had because I've not had any, I've, I've never, let, I, I com- I've I'm never not saying I've never had complaints, I've had a complaint, but we deal with it in a, an effective manner. I've never deal with personally it dealt with it just from what I've been told, yeah. is that mo- when people have said to me, when they've gone through the, the property radio screen, they te- they've tended to yeah. uh, to have it. So I don't know that for sure, but that's so what look, I've been told. Steps that uh, an investor should take when looking to buy from a source are, firstly, the website needs to be complete. It needs to you. You need to have as much information on that website yeah. as possible, so you know where you're going. You need to know that um, it, there's continuation with everything they're doing. So what I mean by that is, for instance, if on their website they are property sourcing limited, whatever, mm. and then on their Facebook they are properties are us. They're not linked. They're not the same. They're would using too many names. Would you recommend doing this research before you even sign up for their yep. database? I would recommend. So you're not getting tempted yep. in by hundred percent. Um, you need to make sure there's continuation. There's a there's a, a pattern that follows across all of their social media of mm. everything. They're using the same name. Um, check into the limited company. Do your due diligence. Check into the directors. That. Check into the directors. Are they a convicted fraudster? Are they have they been convicted for X? Have they have they just come out of prison? Have they I don't know. Do your research. Mm-hmm. Have they got a string of redundant companies or have they got loads of companies that have gone bankrupt mm-hmm. that have only been around for a year? Or have they got listen, there's nothing wrong with having a dissolved company. Was why was it dissolved? Yeah. Is it like if they've got loads of dissolved, dissolved companies and you then you know start I mean? questioning you, it you sort of start asking so just questions. kind of go over your gut a bit to a degree i suppose the other thing is as well is testimonials yeah and are they getting a, a real testimonials? so if you yeah. look on social media and stuff are not just ones that they've put on their website are people talking about them have people bought deals through them yeah. what's the experience been like of those people yeah and you, t- you like with you for example with better source you see loads of people talking about you on on, on yeah. social media on the groups. Oh yeah, I bought a property for Alistair. It was awesome. This happened. Blah blah mm-hmm. blah. And it's all good, 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 good feedback. Yeah. So it to check other people. It's not. You, they don't have that. One thing I'll say, look, look, there's nothing wrong with charging an upfront fee to people. An upfront fee. To you people. do. I've got, I do. Hundred percent. You yeah. don't get a property off me unless you pay for me up. Pay for it up front. However, there's a difference between charging an upfront fee and then and not looking after that money. Right. When we charge an upfront fee, we take the fee and it goes into a client account. And it stays there until our terms and conditions have expired. Now, if in that time period, a customer wants a refund because the deal doesn't stack in their opinion or they've gone out and they're not 100% They happy, get a refund. They get a refund. Yeah, I yeah. do not care about giving refunds. 
what grates my goat or what really bugs me is when you hear about these sources out there that will not give refunds because mm. the deals don't stack and because the deals don't exist. <laughs> and I've got friends. It's just and out now and out. And con, isn't it? It's, it's a the con. The deal doesn't even exist. It's just out it's, and out fraud. It's fraud. Um, I, I've got friends of mine who friends with from within the academy yeah that have that have bought properties from other sources um because they were looking for specific types of deals then properties have never never materialized mm -hmm. and they're they're not getting they won't they, they will not be given refunds and they're like asking for refunds and mm. they're just not getting refunds well, I've bought and it's property off sources. i think i think the key is is just to be aware um and the, the be aware there's a potential yeah. and just and, and just do your own especially if you get to know the person if you know where they're at if they're if they're online if they another thing i look for so in any business that i'm doing i'm hiring a cleaner at the moment uh because we just moved house okay. and i was looking for a cleaner and i've seen that there's someone that lives in the village that a lot of other people use on facebook and i thought i can kind of trust that person because they live in the village where we are and they will care about their reputation yeah for, for where so I'd be happy to let them have a key to my house because I know who they are. I don't know. I don't, but, no, but I know that she has a reputation and, and she lives in, it's only a very small village. She lives in the village. Yeah. She's not going to want to risk doing anything for her reputation. No. Same with our business with Samuel. He's yeah. not going to want to do anything that's uh, that's out of line because he's got a reputation. Yeah. So if you can find a sourcer like yourself or someone that's got a reputation that they care about, yeah, it's going to make it... Do you know what? Ultimately, I think it comes down to the person. Mm. If you're a good person, doesn't matter what you're doing, you'll do it as best to your ability. Mm. If you're a con man, or if you're a scam artist, doesn't matter what business you're in, you're going to scam people. Yeah. Again, it comes down to the person. If you trust that person, do business with them. If you've got this, even the smallest doubt, do not do business with them. Yeah. Do not. Simple. End of. There's no discussion about it. Yeah. Because then if you do do business with these people, then you've, got your, you've only got yourself to blame. Yeah, that's true. So check um, the company number. Hundred percent. VAT sure, number. Make sure the VAT number exists. I, I know another source who was charging VAT. It shouldn't be charging VAT. Oh, okay. Not VAT registered. That's not only fraud. That's that's criminal. Yeah. He can go to prison for that. He was charging VAT. He is not VAT registered. I know someone who did that as well. We're probably talking about the same person. Probably. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Probably. It is disgraceful and criminal. Mm. Um, so check all these figures check that their, their insurance policy is up to date and yeah. it's valid on my website I have a page all about compliance I put my policy numbers on there mm. so you can ring up and I give anyone permission like my insurance broker has got permission that if anyone rings up and says is, is this company registered with you they've got permission to discuss my, my insurance with you and PRS is it really PRS really check one? online check TPO got PRS system T sorry TPO is TPO got, or the yeah, PRS is too PRS. the property redress system you, you, you PRS I'm the property ombudsman your TPO so you can yeah. be one of one of one of either it doesn't matter but, but check on the systems to make yeah. sure that they're registered mm. um, check that the registration is in the name of the person that owns the company mm -hmm. again that's I see this all the time where people have a PRS license for another company mm -hmm. but they sell through this company this company is not registered this company might be but you're not buying off this company you're buying off this company yeah. so this company has to uh, be registered you only need to do this once yeah of course you do and then you found a source that you're happy with yeah. and, and like I say I've bought from sources buying from sources is good it saves a lot of time saves, saves a lot, lot of time. viewing a lot of effort listen I'm a sourcer but I will buy off a sourcer yeah I will if, I, if the right deal comes along if the right deal yeah, comes yeah. along I'll buy off a sourcer I've bought off you of course you have yeah yeah Love taking that money off you. <laughs> <laughs> but you so I hope you guys found that pretty helpful. So uh, just do you choose. There are a lot of, um, not a lot, but there are some people that are that are prepared to, that are con men and stuff. So just, it's just, uh, you know, we, a lot of people talk about this at the moment. So I just there's thought a lot, we, we clarify it. what it is that you need to be looking for. Because I don't want to see, I don't want to see anyone getting burnt or but anyone. But also don't tar all sources with the same brush because there's a lot of good guys out there. there oh, there is. There is. It's just. It's, it's the same with anything. It's the yeah. same with the racist chanting at the football. It's a couple of people that yeah. ruin it for everybody else. 100%. Uh, but yeah. So um, I hope you guys find that useful. And don't forget to tune in next Thursday for another thoughtful Thursday. <laughs>